for the bell. Curtains and Tina. Every poet that ever lived has put that thought into sonnet. He must. He can't help it. Haven't you been listening, Mrs. Moran? Hmm? Haven't you been listening? Oh, yes. It's very nice. Go on, Eugene. I'm longing to hear. What happens to the angel? I beg your pardon for boring you. But you are not boring me. I assure you. Go on, do Eugene. I finished the poem about Angel, quarter an hour ago, and I have read you several things since. Oh, I'm so sorry. It made me horribly uneasy. Why didn't you tell me? It, I was afraid of making you uneasy too. It looked as if it were a weapon. If I were a hero of an old, I should have laid my drawn sword between us. If Mr. Morrell had come in, he would have thought that you had taken up the poker, because there was no sword between us. What? I can't quite follow that. Those sonnets of yours have perfectly adult. Why should there be a sword between us? Oh, never mind. Put that down again, Eugene. There are limits to appetite for poetry. Even your poetry. You have been reading it to me for more than two hours. Ever since James went out. I want to talk. No, I want to talk. I think I shall go out and take a walk in the park. Nonsense. It's shut long ago. Come and sit down on the hurrah and talk moonshine, as you usually do. I want to amuse, don't you want to? Yes. Then come along. I have been so miserable all the evening, and I was doing right. But now, I am doing wrong, and I am happy. Yes, I am sure. You feel great grown up and wicked this evening. And quite proud of yourself, aren't you? Take care. I am ever so much older than you. If you only knew that. May I say some wicked things to you? No. But you may say anything you really and truly feel. Anything at all, no matter what it is. I am not afraid. So long it's your real self, so to speak. Not a mere attitude, a gallant attitude, a wicked attitude, or even a poetic attitude. I put your honor and truth. Now say whatever you want to say. Oh, I can't say anything now. All the words that I know belong to some attitude. All except one. And what one is that? Candida, 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 candida. I must say that now. Because you have put me on my honor and truth. I never think and feel of Mrs. Moran. It's always candida. Of course. And what have you to say to candida? Nothing. But just repeat to your name a thousand times. Don't you feel that every time is a prayer to you? Yes. And doesn't it make you happy to be able to pray? Yes, very happy. Well, then this happiness is answer of your prayers. Do you want anything more? Oh, I come into heaven. Your want is unknown. Okay. Oh, James, how you startled me. I was so taken up with you, Jean. I, I did not hear the latchkey. How was your lecture off? I have never spoken such better in my life. Splendid, dear. Oh, I am getting too late. I have to go to kitchen to see about the supper. 